but with Bella here. Everyone loves you know, their furry friends, but she, find out like how some pets are providing rough, students emotional sure. support. Many people so in the area go hungry house, during the anything. winter and holiday months. Find out how you can help. And see how the Pittsburgh Penguins are giving back to the community. All this and more coming up when Point News starts now. Live from the Point Park University Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is Point News. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Point News. I'm Claire Costello. And I'm Nicole Paxinos. It's the last week of classes for many Point Park students, and many are spending their time studying for final exams. Studies show finals week can be the most stressful time of the year for college students as they present final projects and study for final exams. Here at Point Park, the Center for Student Success has some tips to help students better manage their time and stress during finals. You know, the important things are pacing yourself, um, giving yourself enough time, certainly maintaining your physical and mental well-being, alternating subjects, doing something that might be challenging, and then something that just more of a review or something that you enjoy a little bit more, kind of structuring those and stratifying those a little bit is also a really good approach. The Point Park Library is also helping students prepare for finals with extended library hours. Starting tomorrow and through the weekend, the library will be open until midnight, closing th three hours later than normal. During finals week, the library will be open every day from 8 a.m. until midnight. From everyone here at Point News, we'd like to wish all Point Park students the best of luck next week on their finals. Americans were saddened this past weekend when news broke that former President George H.W. Bush had passed away. He passed away on Saturday at the age of 94. For more on this story, let's send it over to Taylor Fife. Among all of the sadness following the passing of former President George H.W. Bush, there was one bittersweet moment. Sully, President Bush's service dog, paid his respects to the late president at the U.S. Capitol on Tuesday morning. Sully was ushered in and sat by the casket for a few moments. Earlier this week, an Instagram account named for Sully posted a touching photo of the dog lying in front of President Bush's casket. The caption to the photo stated, quote, mission complete, end quote. A past Twitter post by the late president stated that Sully was a beautiful and beautifully trained lab. Sully will be transferred to the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center's facility dog program after the holidays. A second memorial service for the late president is scheduled for today. I'm Taylor Fife for Point News. And like Sully, some pets in the area are making a difference in students' lives. Dara Collins has the story. Certain friends have four paws, a tail, and fur all over. Some students may appreciate the occasional visit from a four-legged friend, but to others, their pet was a necessity on the back-to-school list. Moose is my emotional support animal. I have PTSD. There was a stabbing at my high school um, at Franklin Regional, um, and I was a direct witness to it. It's not severe anymore, but I have definitely healed a lot in the past year. But Moose just helps me a little extra. Gracie is just one of many who suffer from a mental health condition. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 75% of all mental health conditions begin by age 24. One out of five young adults will experience a mental health condition during college. I was diagnosed with clinical depression uh, roughly a year ago. So having someone there at all times definitely helps. Bella is Noah's someone. In his third semester at Point Park, Noah is happy to have Bella's emotional support. Last year when I was alone and when like the depression set in or the anxiety set in, it was rough. But with Bella here, you know, she could come up. She, it's like she knows. When it's rough, she always makes sure that she's there. And she'll come up, she'll sit on me, she'll bring me a mouse, anything. According to the Spring 2018 American College Health Association National College Health Assessment, anxiety and depression ranked in the top four negative impacts on academic performance. Animals have quite the opposite impact on students. In general, even if I'm having a bad day, just seeing him at the top of the stairs when I get back to my apartment and him just like waiting for me, that just brightens my day just even a little by a little bit. 
Studies from the National Center for Biotechnology Information revealed petting a dog decreases stress hormones, regulates breathing, lowers blood pressure, and releases oxytocin, a hormone associated with bonding and affection. Artie is he's actually really special. Artie has the ability to really lower his stress levels. I mean, he's really good at what he does. People who are under a significant amount of stress that really don't know how to deal with different circumstances, he kind of reads that. For those students who do not have a constant companion, the university invites therapy dogs like Artie on campus once a month, known as Campus Canines, the monthly event calms even the most stressed out college student. His one command is give him the butt. So whenever I tell Artie to give him the butt, he turns around and he backs up and he has an opportunity to actually give the person his butt to rub. It just gives him the opportunity to have an interaction with the dog where it's not intimidating at all. I have not heard one negative comment about campus canines. I think what I see over and over year after year with this program is, and the quotes that you see in the student newspaper and so on, is that if anything, it makes them feel a little bit closer to home. Whether a student engages with an animal for mental health or stress-related purposes, the interactions have their benefits. A therapy dog gives you an opportunity to break down barriers, give a person an opportunity to slow down, relax for a second, and pet the dog. A big part of, of all mental illnesses is feeling alone, and to have someone there or something there at all times, it, it definitely it goes a long way in, in making the struggle a lot less difficult. I will never regret picking Moose because he was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. You were. You were my best decision I ever made. Mm, I love you. Reporting for Point News from downtown Pittsburgh, I'm Dara Collins. Thanks, Dara. It's time now for a quick break, but when we return, Delaney Bomas has your weekend weather report. We'll be right back. Website uview.pointpark.edu. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Join uview and find your herd. Join EOP. Join EOP. Yeah. Join on point with politics. Three, two, one. Join Pioneer Sideline. Thanks again for joining us on Point News. This past weekend we saw some beautiful weather, but I'm not sure we'll be seeing many more days like that this year. You might be right about that, Nicole. Delaney Baumis is over at Weather Right Now. What can we expect this weekend, Delaney? Thanks, guys. Well, this weekend you cannot expect any snow or rain, which might be good for some people, but we are going to have some lower temperatures. So starting on Friday, we're going to be a high of 31, which is low, so freezing weather. So it's going to be a little chilly. Get those gloves, those hat, and those scarves out. And then on Saturday, you're going to be a high of 33. And then on Sunday, again, it's going to be still low again with a high of 36. So not terrible weather, but not too, too great either. So we'll send it back over to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Delaney. Well, it seems like authentic winter weather is here to stay. The holiday season and winter months leave many people hungry. Our reporter Victoria Bales has more on how community members are trying to fight food insecurity in Pittsburgh. The holiday season is all about giving, but what about those who go without basic necessities such as food? 
According to the USDA Economic Research Services, high food security is defined as no reported indications of food access problems or insecurities, whereas very low food security is defined by reports of multiple indications of disrupted eating patterns and reduced food intake. A food pantry was needed in prosperity, and Rose Donahue and Marissa King stepped up to fulfill that need. We did a Christmas box collection for the Claysville Food Pantry probably 13 years ago. And it's after that the food bank contacted me and wanted to know if we would want to open up our own food pantry here because there was a need at the time. Donahue and King say they both see an increase in need from their clients around the holiday season. It's always higher during the holidays and the winter months just because you have to pay heating bills. Um, your children's in school, so you, you're having to buy um, school clothing and school supplies. So winter is always harder. Another reason that I don't think she mentioned is people that work seasonal jobs. You know, we have a couple clients that you only see during the winter months when they're laid off. According to Food Research and Action Center, adults in poverty who face food insecurity are more likely to be at risk for conditions like diabetes, heart disease, obesity, depression, and disability. The pantry distributes food to around 45 to 50 families and do seasonal distribution of supplies in months that are financially harder on families. Our Christmas boxes is things that every family needs and things they usually would not take the money to buy because they need to you save their money for food. But they have all cleaning supplies. They would go from, everybody gets um, Clorox, laundry detergent, fabric softener, dish liquid. It's all of those household items that they need that they skimp on. Donahue yeah. says to help, people can donate food, money, or their help on distribution day or the day before. And similarly to Donahue and King, Lizzie Spizak saw a need in her community last year and started the UVU Turkey Fund to help. The UVU Turkey Fund is a fundraiser to raise money for less fortunate families so that they have the opportunity to have a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Spizak says after the money is raised, the UVU Turkey Fund gives the money to PNC Bank and the bank matches a donation. That money then goes to the Greater Pittsburgh Food Bank in the name of the KDKA Turkey Fund. We do the bake sale and the raffle tickets. Last year we just did the bake sale. I kind of want to do something bigger. Um, my mom you know nice, made right? like nine dozen cookies. She donated that and uh, we sold those. UVU members set up an academic hall for four days asking students and faculty for donations. Um, this year we raised $420 at the end of the day. So I, I'm really happy with this year's goal. I'm got, like Our goal was $400. Spizak says UVU relies on the community for the stories they produce, so she wanted the student organization to give back to the area. You get what you give. So the more you put into something, the better the product is going to be that you have to work with. So that was really my goal. Spizak hopes the UVU Turkey Fund will continue on next year beyond her time here at Point Park. Reporting for Point News, I'm Victoria Bales. After the break, find out how the penguins are showing support in the community. Stay with us. <laughs> What's one word to describe CAB? Welcoming. Community. Creative. Experiences. Family. Openness. Pineapple. The Campus Activities Board is a student-run organization that consists of seven different committees. Each focuses on event planning, marketing, and administrative activities. Join us in organizing the juiciest events on campus from late night bingo to festive dances To our team bonding meetings. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Point Park Cap or like us on Facebook at Campus Activities Board at Point Park University. Good evening and welcome to Newsnight. I'm Josh Krupp alongside Jess Patterchak. Defending his decision to kick out 15 Cuban diplomats from the United States. Thanks, Allison. Fitness on Demand has returned to Point Park. Residents fear that Mount Agung will have a repeat of 1963's eruption. Two star NFL quarterbacks made the headlines this week after wrapping up. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That's your news tonight. For Nick Tomarello, I'm Alex Grubbs. Have a great night.
Welcome back. It may be cold outside, but that didn't stop fans from heading to Heinz Field Sunday night to watch the Steelers game. That's right, Claire. Our sports reporter, Sarah Maculin, has the scoop on what went on in that game and in the rest of Pittsburgh sports. Sarah? Yeah, guys, unfortunately, things haven't been going too well lately for the Pittsburgh sports teams. On Saturday, Pitt faced off against Clemson in the ACC College Football Championship, and it wasn't pretty. Pitt managed just eight passing yards in the game, with Clemson dominating Pitt by a final score of 42-10. Fans will have the chance to watch Pitt in action one more time when they face off against Samford in the Sun Bowl on New Year's Eve. And Pittsburgh football woes continued on Sunday as the Pittsburgh Steelers lost their second straight game, falling to the Los Angeles Chargers 33-30. The game did come with some controversy, however, as the Chargers had three chances to kick the game-winning field goal due to two questionable offsides penalties. The Steelers will look to bounce back this Sunday against the Oakland Raiders at 425. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sarah. With the recent Tree of Life synagogue shooting in Squirrel Hill, the, shoot, the spotlight excuse me, has been on those giving back in the community. Point News reporter Allison Schubert went in-depth how one famous Pittsburgh organization is doing their part. Take a look. Pittsburgh has always been, and will always be, a sports town. But the teams contribute in more ways than just Pittsburgh pride. For years, community engagement has been an important part of the Pittsburgh Penguins. But how do they decide how to give back? Players who come here know the Penguins' reputation as we give back, so that's part, you know, and obviously the leaders in the locker room do, so it, it's just kind of a part of being here. It's part of our mission statement. We have th four pillars of our mission statement. One is to have a positive impact on the community. We have a foundation, so it's very much a part of who we are, always has been. From the business side of things, the Penguins have many departments that must be on the same page for their community engagement plans to mirror the organization's brand. When the Tree of Life shooting occurred on October 27th in Squirrel Hill, the team knew they had to respond. But deciding when and how to answer was the difficult part. You can have a written plan of action. When something like that happens, that's all out the window. It's what should we do? Uh, the thing there was trying to find out the accurate information. Um, there's an extra sensitivity because there's a religion involved. You want to do the right thing, you don't want to do too much. That's kind of the, the debate we were having is let's make sure we do the right thing, it's sensitive, and what should we do? According to McMillan, the trick is to get all of the departments on the same page. After you respond to the situation though, the outcome can be unpredictable. I think looking back, we did do the right thing. You're not sure. You're, you're never sure going in, and, and, and that's kind of the debate. For instance, we came up with a patch with the Star of David, but we called the Jewish Federation and had some rabbis look at it just to make sure you know, something we were putting on our uniform wasn't something that would, that, would, that would cause an issue somewhere else. According to Forbes, the NHL is the best professional sports league in the world when it comes to the willingness and enthusiasm of players giving back to their community. The Pens are no exception, with players even on the level of Captain Sidney Crosby asking what more he can do to give back. When, when you have players who embrace that and want to do it and do things on, your own, on their own, that makes it much easier, and that's, you know, that's what we've always had. New media coordinator for the Penguins, Evan Shaw, says that fans will oftentimes take to social media or the comment section of the videos on their website to voice their skepticism of the organization. McMillan ensures that if the players could have it their way, no cameras would be present to avoid that theory. They don't want it to look like everything we do is to get media coverage. A lot of things we do, we, we have cameras there. And, and they always say, can't we do sometimes with, without cameras? And you try to strike that balance. You want the public to know you're doing these things. Critics aside, McMillan and the Pens continue to build on their pillar of serving the community and the people that make the job worth it. The best part about working in sports is you have an opportunity to make people happy. You know, what we do is not really important at the end of the day. We're playing sports, it's entertainment. We take it very seriously, um, but it really, you know, stepping back with what's going on in the world is, is entertainment. But you get to put smiles on people's faces. Reporting from downtown Pittsburgh, I'm Allison Schubert for Point News. 
Well, that's all we have for this week and this year. So thank you for watching Point News. And we'll be back next semester, Thursday at 2 p.m. Enjoy your winter break, pioneers. <laughs>